So in this guide, I'd like to show you all the different gameplay possibilities you have when using cars, as it focuses on how the car can keep you alive in combat. Okay, so the first thing you might wonder is how safe are you in a car? So let's check this out. I'm going to spawn a zombie over here, then I'm going to hide in this car and see what happens. Let's put this over here. Zombie spawned. Let's get its attention and let's hop in the car. Okay, so now if a zombie is chasing you in the car, the zombie will always go for the window, for the seat position that you're in. As you can see here. Now the zombie is hitting at the front left window. And each hit takes away 3%, and that appears to be consistent for all cars in the game. And I'm using fast zombies, so it might be a bit faster than a slow zombie. Okay, now, if I switch to seat number two, then the zombie will switch over and start chipping away at this car, at this window. As long as the zombie hasn't broken through the window where you're sitting at, you're completely safe from that zombie. Let's go back to the first seat. Okay, now the window is open. And as you can see, now the zombie can reach for me and bite and scratch and do all the things that he would do if he would, if he would be able to reach you in the game mode. Okay. Now, if you want to interact with the zombie, you can just hold right mouse like you're aiming, and then left click, and then you can shove the zombie out of the way. And if it's one zombie, you can basically just keep him at bay like that. This is very useful, and if you're stuck, if the car suddenly stops, or you're hiding in the car because you've slept in it, and a zombie came up, you can just keep pushing it away. Until it falls down. And then kill it after it's on the ground. So the next thing you might wonder is, can you use firearms from a car? Yes, you can. Okay, so, to use a fireman in the car, the first thing you should do is make sure you got a weapon equipped. Okay, so, equip primary. So the weapon is actually in your hand and it's loaded. The next thing you have to do is you press V in your keyboard, that's the default for things with the car you can do. Then you go to open window. Then when windows open... Oh, why is that zombie not spawning? Oh, that's spawn. Then when the window is open, you can... Yeah, you can aim at zombies anywhere you want. Or it have to be within a certain range to actually shoot at them. Also, you have to be careful while you're aiming, while you're shooting, you don't have any car controls. And if you do any other action that's related to weapons while you're driving, let's say you're reloading a magazine, then you lose steering control until the magazine, for example, is loaded. Get a second zombie. Now if a zombie actually manages to get close to you, let's say your gun is empty or something, then you can still do the shoving animation. The next thing you might wonder about is, is it safe to drive your car through a crowd of zombies? So, let's find out. Okay. As long as the front left window is still not broken, the zombies cannot reach you. However, a secondary problem is that you might get your car stuck in a group of zombies and you can't get out of it. And that happens when critical parts required for driving get broken. See, as I'm driving through the crowd, notice what gets damaged on high velocity impacts with zombie crowds. The hood takes damage, and the tires take some damage. However, tire damage only it comes from it, it only comes from driving over zombies. It actually doesn't come from impacts. Okay, let's check what happens if the hood is gone. Okay, now the hood. Let's move the hood. Okay, now the hood is gone. Let's see what happens. Okay, the engine just took a hit from the 
lantern. Okay, not right. Serve through groups. Now you see, now the engine starts taking damage. Okay, so you can plow through um, zombie crowds as long as your windows is okay, as long as the engine is okay, and as long as the tires are okay. And the hood acts as a, a sort of as like a hit point shield. As long as the hood is there, the engine doesn't take damage from frontal impacts with zombies. So the car, the, uh, the parts that will most likely end up getting destroyed when driving through a crowd of zombies is the end, the first the hood, then the engine. And the tires will take some damage. However, it takes a long time to damage them from driving over zombies. Can I also use the remaining zombies for checking what happens if you just stand still with your car? Okay, I'm going to repair the car. Okay, as expected, that we, you got the... Um, Mainly the windows getting damaged, tires are not damaged. So if you sta if you're in a car that's stationary, the thing that will get you is the zombies clawing their way through the windows and biting you to death. Now let's explore I think the greatest mystery in Project Zombies. Tire pressure. Okay, tire pressure is a separate value from the condition of a tire. So if you go into your vehicle um, your vehicle mechanic screen. You click on the tire, it usually tells you the condition of the tire, 100% over here, and the tire pressure at 35. And there's a value below it called wheel friction 1.4. Okay, so in this game, wheel friction is, is it's, it's, it's not really what, you th what it intends to, well, what the name implies. It's the higher your wheel friction, the easier your car rolls on the road. And the lower the wheel friction value, which is directly tied to tire pressure, the more your car remains glued to the ground. Okay, first let me show you. This is a car with normal tire pressure, 35, and has the standard tires in it. I'm going to drive a bit. I'm letting go. Notice how it's rolling. I'm going to drive backwards. I get prepared this car with tire pressure of only 5 out of 35. It's almost no tire pressure. Let's see what it does. Driving. I'm letting go. See, the moment you let go, it immediately basically glues the tires to the ground. And there's no rolling. See? It remains still. If you want to try that maneuver of, of driving backwards, then turning, it gets stuck halfway. Okay, so... The one thing to take away is that the lower your tire pressure, the more the car is glued to the ground. And this, I think, has only negative effects for the plan. Okay, let's open the screen again. Okay, let's see here, front left tire, front right tire. Now, tire pressure is lost as a player drives normally. So if you just drive down the road, normal in-game driving without any excessive off-road driving, you usually lose think about one point of tire pressure for every two or three minutes of driving. So there's something you regularly have to check and reinflate the tires. And as we just seen, it makes sense to keep the tire pressure at the maximum all the time because I've, I've tested it and made a few tests and so far I haven't found any negative to having maximum tire pressure all the time. And I think some choices or item choices you can make in the game Prove that point. So, for example, for each type of tire, for each vehicle type, there are three different types of tire. There's the, the standard tire, then the performance, and the value tire. Value is the lowest, standard is, well, the middle, and performance is the high end. And performance basically has tire capacity of 40 instead of 35, which means you can put more tire pressure in it. Then if you've got more tire pressure in it, let's see. If you got more tire pressure in it, you have a higher wheel friction value. Because on the standard vehicle, with all the tires filled up, you have 1.4 and you have 1.57. Okay, let's repair this car. And drive this for a moment. See how responsive it is. OK, 
Okay, accelerate a bit, let go. Notice it effortlessly keeps driving. Let's go down a bit. Turn around. See, it almost completely turns on, on that maneuver. Okay, also, this has a negative thing about having extremely low tire pressure. Because, let me show you, just go to the low pressure car again. Let's say you're driving down the street and you have, you don't have much fuel and you want to conserve. So as you're driving, you usually would sometimes, instead of accelerating constantly, either use the, um, what do you call it in English, the thing where you automatically drive. It's currently cut off because I have to use a window mode to record. You either have to use the, um, this, um, so it drives at a static speed, or you can just drive and let go and just keep the car rolling. However, if you've got really low tire pressure, it immediately gets glued to the ground when you let go which will cost you more fuel, because every time you have to accelerate again, you have to accelerate from almost zero again. So that's another reason to keep tire pressure always at a maximum. I'm going to show you a prepared test of both the 5 tire pressure and the 35 tire pressure car driving down the track. Another question you might wonder is, does if driving an off-road affect your tires? And I've tested a few times, and so far I've seen, I think, almost no difference in how much the tire condition gets reduced by driving off-road than driving a normal road. I, I couldn't see a difference on it. And when I started playing the game, I had a few situations where I was driving off-road, driving away from zombies with cars in poor condition, and sometimes the tire would just blow out of nowhere. And... Back then I assumed it was from the off-road driving, but now I'm, I tested it a few times today and I can see only minimal or no change at all in, in tire condition when driving off-road. The only thing that's different is that your acceleration is slower. And finally, can you use cars as a barricade? So for this demonstration I'm going to park the car like this. Okay, so now I'm outside of the car and I'm going to spawn a zombie and see what happens. See? Now the zombie is smart enough to figure out if they can get under the car between the wheelbase to get to you. 